CataractCoach.com. If you need iris hooks, just use them. They can really help facilitate your surgery and often work better than pupil expansion rings. Our operating guest surgeon here is Dr. Philippe Tamburas from Brazil. And you can see this patient has a white cataract. Some tripan blue dye was placed there and now making another paracentesis. The iris hooks are very helpful because they really stay out of your way. So you do need to make an extra incision for each hook. Now normally the hooks come in sets of five or sometimes four. And the tradition is most surgeons tend to use these four hooks. Some use all five and make a pentagon shape. Now remember, in addition, you'll need to make your regular paracentesis. So if you use four iris hooks and a main incision and a paracentesis, you have a total of six incisions in the eye. Now the paracentesis incisions are very tiny and really of, of no consequence. So these hooks are usually made of a type of plastic or proline or something like that. So there's the hook and it has a, a stay collar on it. So you hook the end of the uh, hook underneath that pupil margin. And the adv advice is don't tend it up all the way just yet. You also may want to angle your paracentesis for the hooks in a manner so that it aims down towards the iris. So it aims exactly where you want it. Now he's got those two hooks in and the iris is on a little bit of tension, but not much. Once all four hooks are in, then you can apply more tension to all of them and further expand the pupil. Now Tom Oding and his group in Iowa have described many years ago the idea of instead of making a square here, making a diamond shape. In other words, having one of the corners of the square go in the sub-incisional space under your main incision. That way, when you go in and out with the phaco probe, you don't end up touching the iris. So here now we can ex expand the pupil more by cinching these down and placing those collars. So now that's really a pretty good exposure. And at this point, you can continue with the case. Now notice that because the tripan blue dye was placed at the beginning, the incomplete staining of the capsule has resulted. So it only was stained really well in the middle. The rest is not stained as much. There's that milk coming out. So here's a case where I would have done the, the double excess technique or even needle aspirate to get some of the fluid out of there. But luckily, it's not too much lens milk. So now this rex will be done. Remember that this pupil right now is probably only about five by five millimeters as a square. And so you definitely want to make a sufficiently large capsular excess. And you can see again where the tripan blue dye didn't really stain the periphery of this enough. And that also may cause you to make a little bit smaller of a capsular excess. So I like the idea of putting in more and more viscoelastic. Certainly use as much as you need and get that rexus completed. So now going in here, the nucleus spins right away without any hydro dissection. Think about it. A white cataract, especially it's one with some intumescent lens fluid, that means the cortex has been liquefied already. So now chopper going in here is the phaco probe. Let's see the technique. So if you're a beginning surgeon, especially use iris hooks, it's going to make your life much easier for a tough case. And even if you're an advanced surgeon, some, there are some cases where I prefer iris hooks. That's a very nice chop technique there. I like that very much. Um, beautiful, beautiful job. Very nice chopping and emulsifying this nucleus. If you are uh, using a pupil expansion ring, those also work well. Now, there are a couple of options available. We know the Malugan ring, but there's also the B-Hex from Suvan Bhattacharji. And that's a really nice device as well because it's very thin. And then now, expand, uh, the expanded pupil allows us to see the whole capsular bag. And we can remove all those last pieces. That looks great. We're showing you the whole case here. We've obviously sped it up. I just want to be able to show you the entire case. And now doing the cortex removal. Sometimes in these white cataracts, you can get some adherent or scarred up material on the lens capsule. That really, you just can't remove. And that's okay. Always think about the delta, the difference between the before and after for this patient. Starting off with a white cataract and going to have a beautiful outcome, even if there's a little capsule haze, it doesn't really make a difference. The patient's going to be absolutely thrilled, and you can always do a YAG capsulotomy later. So now time to put the lens in here, and then we'll talk about removal of these iris hooks. So looks like enlarging the incision a little bit, and here comes the lens injector. Looks like a... Uh, a three-piece lens in good orientation and then getting that dialed into position there it is in the bag it goes 
And now you can see the size of the rexus, which is about a five millimeter rexus. That all looks great. Now here's what I do. I take the hooks out first before removing viscoelastic because it's much easier to. And so it, it's much easier to do it as well when the eyes is fully inflated. Now to take the hooks out, you just do them the opposite way you implanted them, or there's another option. Just loosen them and just give them a yank. The tips are actually very flexible and will release the tissue. So this is the proper way of undoing it, but even the other way of just taking them and just give them a quick tug will release the iris as well. And at the end here, keep in mind that these hooks or pupil expansion devices or pupil stretching can all cause slight iatrogenic corectopias or little changes in the iris margin or pupil. And that's patients have, should be warned about. And again, it's of no consequence. The eye still functions normally. That's a beautiful result here at the end, sealing up the incision. Really enjoyed watching this case. A little bit of retained viscoelastic here. That should be washed out as well. Now, notice you don't have to go back and hydrate all those little pairs and TCs if they already seal. And usually because they're smaller, they end up sealing very well on their own without the need for hydration. But just be sure and check at the end of the case. Check all your incisions, and we're good to go. Thank you for submitting the video. I really enjoyed watching it and encourage you. If you need Iris hooks, hey, just do it.